Hi guys, welcome to Monitoring and Evaluation Made Simple. I'm your host, Coach Alexander. If you're here for the very first time, do well to subscribe to this channel because every now and then I post regular updates on M&D. Today we'll be looking at primary data and secondary data in research methodology. And I have to tell you this, guys, in uh, monitoring and evaluation, there are elements of research. Okay, and you are going to see this, especially if you you got your university degree and you got a, you did your thesis, your final year paper, or you could have done your master's final year paper thesis. You understand this very well. So in monitoring and evaluation, there are elements of research. So this is what I wanted us to discuss. It won't be a long video, hopefully. Okay, so as usual, I have these two very free ebooks. If you haven't downloaded these ebooks, please do well to download them. They are totally free and they're in the link description below. And as usual, I have these timestamps, although this video I'm hoping won't be very long, so I may have just a few timestamps just to help you navigate this video so that you can just go to the part of this video which is more relevant to you by simply clicking. Okay, so without wasting any more time, let's get straight to this tutorial. Okay, so what is primary data? Well, primary data, guys, is the data that you collect yourself, okay? It's the data that you go in the field, you collect yourself. So this is typical, especially when you're doing research. Eh? There are so many projects around the world that are trying to make a difference. But you'll find that... Um, in, in the event that perhaps this project is doing certain activities, like let's say uh, trainings or other things, you as an M&D professional or specialist will go in the field and try to establish how many trainings were actually conducted. And you are doing it yourself. You are interviewing the beneficiaries. You are interviewing the project staff to get this data, okay? So you are not using anyone else to do it for you, but it is your organization that's financing the processes and it is you yourself that is collecting this data, either through surveys or interviews. On the other hand, secondary data is data gathered from studies, okay? And for instance, haven't you ever gone on the internet and you search maybe a certain topic and then you see all these uh, so many pdf files on google and when you click those pdf files you find that different scholars have done a research paper there's so much research out there on the internet so now if you use the findings in that research paper to feed into your report, your monitoring and evaluation reports, then what you've collected is secondary data because it's not you who actually did the data collection or the analysis and the report. No, it wasn't you, it was somebody else. So you're using someone else's work in order to come up with information that you can populate in your own monitoring and evaluation reports. And it may not just be scholars, but even uh, national statistics offices who do nationwide research and because they have the capacity, government has the capacity to do a nationwide research, instead of your organization doing it, you simply tap into the information that government has already done and use it in your report. Okay, so in monitoring and evaluation, like I earlier mentioned, you see, what we basically do as M&D specialists, all right, is we rely a lot on what is in the logical framework matrix. Okay, so whenever we define what it is the project wants to achieve, we we'll simply go to the indicators. And it is in these indicators that you say that to yourself, okay, fine, these are the indicators, let me collect data on them. So if you are collecting primary data, you are basically using your own time, your own financial resources, your own data collection tools and personnel to go in the field and collect this primary data. Okay, But on the contrary, 
if you are doing, and as I mentioned before, if you are depending a lot on the national central statistic reports or evaluation reports by, done by consultants from a different uh, sector, maybe that, that are outside your organization or, and may not even be related to your project, but may have done a report that is related to what your project wants to achieve and you think that data will help a lot, then you, this qualifies as secondary data. It could be also other sources of information, okay? So then this is secondary data. So now the thing is that, how do you get to know, because you are presented with a logical framework, how do you actually get to know that, okay, fine, we need to recognize that we, we can collect primary and secondary data. How do you get to know which indicator is actually primary data and which is secondary data? Actually, the logical framework would, I mean, the, it's not even the logical framework, but it's the M and D framework that will tell you where this data is coming from. So for instance, if you are collecting this data yourself, Definitely that's primary data. But there are some tips that I've personally seen that have worked for me that give me a hint that, okay, this is primary, this is secondary data. It's usually, you usually collect primary data on indicators that you can control. What do I mean here? Take for instance that your project is, your project is implementing trainings, okay? If they want to train women, so that they can become more empowered in financial, in managing their finances and economic generating activities, okay? So your project does trainings, okay? So now, in order to have more people, more women trained, what will your project do? In essence, you are going to escalate, you are going to increase your trainings, the number of trainings, have you seen? So meaning that if you're training women, you can decide whether you can upscale the training or you can decrease the trainings, okay? So in that case, you have control on the number of trainings that women have, okay? But you do not have control on what these women do with such trainings, okay? What I'm saying is that even after you train these women, your assumption is that they are going to be empowered financially. But it's not always the case because they have the power to decide how they are going to use the skills. All right. So if somebody comes and does a research after maybe after you've done the training, someone else comes and does a research to see whether your project had any positive impact on the women empowerment. All right, that is obviously going to be some huge research, okay? Something that your project may, may not have been able to fund and something that you can't control, okay? So let me just give you a practical example of this logical framework. If you look at this, these are high level indicators. You've got the impact and outcome. Usually these, you, can, you don't really have any control over them, okay? And even if you said, okay, if people, immediate results from your activity, and then they say people trains, you know, the people trainings, you see the trainings are appearing there. You can, con your project can uh, increase the number of trainings, but that does not necessarily mean that there will be change in the knowledge and attitudes and behavior because this is dependent on a lot of factors, okay? So what I'm saying is that you have control over this and because of that, it's so easy to collect data at this level. Primary data is so easy to collect. It's so easy to collect data on activities, okay? But when it comes to this level, this is usually high level. And to, to you, you, you may collect it, yeah? But you know, such, such researchers may be so out of your reach in terms of the resources you need to conduct 
this level of research, okay? But maybe you can, but not all the time. Because if you've noticed, sometimes there may be these high-level projects that are trying to, for instance, let's talk about the sustainable development goals that the UN, United Nations, is promoting, all right? And you, those, that is really high level, you know, the, the issue of people being free from poverty. Your project can't, doesn't have the financial capacity to collect that information. And it's very difficult to control your project to control poverty levels of a whole nation. You see what I'm saying? So usually you depend on reports that have been done by big organizations like national central offices and maybe even the government themselves have that capacity to do these high level researches. So the reports that they generate is what you're going to use to feed into these high level indicators, okay? <clears throat> if you are an m and specialist, please write to me. Let me know how you feel about what I've told you today. I know this can be subject to debate. I like constructive debate and criticism. So please write to me on the email below. We discuss about it. But that was just a basic hint. I wanted you to understand this. I wanted you to embrace that indeed. So every time you do any kind of monitoring and evaluation activities, there will always be primary and secondary data involved. So this is where I end, folks. I sure hope you enjoyed this short presentation. I've been your host, Coach Alexander. Until we meet again, see you on the other side. Bye.